she was wondering if Savannah could be recording in progress. Here we go. I turn the right way tonight with the flag. Okay, so, uh, rise your able pledge allegiance to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here we have uh, to the full council, uh, four members, uh, Jack, Mallory, and John at present, and Abby's uh, present via Zoom. So with those, have roll call uh, for all votes. <coughs> and and uh, so uh, first item on the agenda is uh, approval of the following. Uh, Board of Assessors, August 8th, 2021. Mr. Chair, motion to sign the minutes from the Board of Assessors meeting from August 10th, 2021. Second. Any discussion on those minutes? Uh, hearing none, we'll, we'll take the roll. Valerie? Yes. John? Yes. Abby? Yes. And Jack? Yep. Is four zero. Okay, then we have the town council of uh, August eighth, two thousand twenty-one. Chair, I move we adopt the or accept the town council meeting minutes from August tenth, two thousand twenty-one, as written. Second. Okay, we motion and second. Any discussion on those uh, minutes? Okay, uh, we'll take the roll on that. Uh, Mallory. Yes. John. Yes. Abby. Yes. And Jack votes. Yes. The public hearing of August 17th, 2021. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the minutes as written from the public hearing dated August 17th, 2021. Second. Any motion second? Any discussion on those minutes? Here we'll take the roll. Uh, Mallory? Yes. John? Yes. Abby? Yes. Exactly. The motion passes 4 0. And then the town council of August 17, 2021. Mr. Chair, I move we accept the town council meeting minutes dated August 17, 2021, as written. Okay. Any discussion on that motion? Okay, we'll take a roll on that. Um, Valerie? Yes. John? Yes. Abby? Yes. Jack votes yes as well. That motion passes 4 0. Uh, signing the treasurer's warrants. Mr. Chair, motion to sign the treasurer's warrant dated August 19, 2021, in the amount of $890,797.51. Second. Um, I had asked uh, Jennifer. For a little bit of supporting information on, on that? Yes, and I made a um, spreadsheet that you have right on your table. It shows that um, we started the bond in 2016. Our last payment is in fiscal year 27. We have two payments every year, the second payment being in April with just an interest payment at that point. So this is the big payment. That might be the difference. Because um, I was going through this spreadsheet. And um, again, it might be dated, it might have the, an interest rate that was assumed, but not real or whatever for on this one here, the proposed budget by year with bond. Um, it was, um, 800. Is that number ring a bell at all? So this fiscal year, it's four hundred and forty-four thousand dollars for the road bond. 
Good. Total this particular payment today is the 424 with an additional $20,000 worth of interest due on April 1st, 2020. I'm sorry, 2022. Okay. So I can look to see what you're looking at and see if that was prior to. It, the it was, I just went to grab my yeah. file yeah. And, uh, and and it looks like, let me pass it over to John. Uh, it looks like it was you know, something we had gotten probably for uh, the background of or just the. Uh, an idea of what, what we were, were heading for. So yeah, that was proposed budget. Yeah, I would say that would have been preliminary. Prior, prior to us actually getting the bonds. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah. I did not create this. Yeah. Okay, like I said, I just yeah. saw the number. I said, okay, I'll just go look it up. Mm -hmm. I, that's something different. That'd be great, thank you. Yeah. I'll put that right in here. Yeah, I had one question just because I'm curious. Yeah. What's Eliminator Inc? Limited Rink is a uh, pipe supplier. They 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 vend all kinds of construction materials throughout the, by the lead traffic circle. Okay, you know, culvert. All right, so uh, that's what they. I was just curious because I haven't. I don't remember seeing them on any of our warrants reports. Yeah, that's curious. Um, someone might. Have, is it a big number? That's only seventeen hundred dollars. It was just. The name stuck out when I started, that's all. Yeah, because sometimes people will go over because they're handy, they're kind of local. They might just need a coupling of something. They just go and, and buy something for $50. Uh, but it's just probably something more substantial than that. Okay. Okay, so uh, we have a motion and a second to sign the treasurer's warrant. Any other discussion on that? Okay. Uh, we'll take the roll, Mallory. Yes. John. Yes. Abby. Yes. And Jack. Oh, yes. That motion passes. Was it? Before some presentations, do we have anything this evening? Okay. Um, public comment. Are there any members of the public that wish to speak on items that are not on the agenda? I do. Okay, could you just identify yourself, please? I think you can sit right there. I think you, you can sit there. Yep, I we have a new camera see. system. Okay. You can stand if you wish. Well, I am just here in hopes of. Um, could you just give us your name and your address, please? Sure. Jenny Sabaki, 74 Goodwin Street, Alfred, Maine. How do you spell your last name, please? Z as in zebra, A, V as in Victor, A, C, K, Y. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Go ahead. Now, at the suggestion of Chief LaJoy, because I am at my wit's end with neighbors that have been shooting fireworks, they live, our houses are within 15 feet apart, of course. So, all of this debris is raining down into my yard for an hour and a half on July 4th. And I continue to pick it up. And these explosive chemicals inside this little tube thing, of course, is toxic. And so it's in my garden, which bothers me because I don't wanna eat the food in my garden because of all the chemicals and all these little tubular things and these plastic things that I go over in my lawn mower, of course, then there's tons more that's, this is just a fraction of what I have, but there's so many little particles all over my yard. I understand that you can shoot them off from your property, but if you can't contain it on your property and it's imposing on your neighbors where there's just, debris throughout my entire yard. This happened for an hour and a half, raining down over my house and into my yard. And that's what I do in my spare time, pick this stuff up, but I can't pick it all up. And he said, there's nothing we can do about this, ma'am. You have to talk to the council because they are the ones responsible for an ordinance. And I thought I would just come and talk to you about it because it keeps getting worse year after year. And I just don't want to have to continue 
to worry about the food that I'm eating and the chemical to the toxic stuff that's spewed throughout my yard just for their convenience when fireworks are in every Seacoast community. It's not like we're taking away their fireworks. I just think it's highly inconsiderate of neighboring uh, residents that have to put up with they're having fun when we are the ones for weeks afterwards trying to clean up after it. I think the ordinance is long overdue. The police tell me they can't do anything, so it's just not going to stop. And I have an issue with it. So I thought I would bring it to your attention, and I'm hoping you would seriously consider an ordinance because I know that if this were in your yard, with your kids, your animals, your food, you would want an ordinance because it's really not fun to be cleaning up year after year for weeks on end. That's all I have to say. Mr. Chair? Yes. I would like to have the town manager speak to Chief LaJoy because it is against the state of Maine law, as we've learned many times during this council, council meetings, to light off fireworks in your yard and have the debris land in somebody else's yard. So our police force can definitely do something if debris are landing in her yard. So if you, can, from my yard. If you can speak to Chief LaJoy, it is Maine state law. I will certainly do that. That's probably not going to make him happy with me, but. So he, he can do something about that? If, 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 you, if you go home and Google Maine state law on fireworks, you will see. There is a chapter in there that states if you light them off in your property, they have to land on your property. If not, they are breaking the state of Maine law. Not a town law, but the state of Maine law that is enforcing. So yes, they can do something about it. And people need to file reports and be encouraged to file a report if de debris lands on their property or if some of their property is destroyed, perhaps from embers or something like that. It's all about documentation and making a report. Where do I file this report? With the police. Well, so, I honestly, I have been there. I've sat down with him. He told me he was reiterating the law. He said, I'm going to look it up. He read it. He called me back days later, said he was going to look into it and said there really was nothing that he could do other than send me to the council in hopes of an ordinance because there was no ordinance in our town that would prohibit anyone lighting fireworks off on the property. They're on their property, but they're shooting them over my house and onto my property, which like I said, it's, this is just a fraction of what I have found. So there's some inconsistency here and I don't know where it lies. I would hope that the chief would understand there's measures he could take, but if that's not true, then someone's going to talk to him about it. I will talk about that. Okay. All right. But, Thank but you I know. also suggest it seems like there is a little bit of um, misinterpretation, not misinterpretation, but like a, a difference in how this is being interpreted. This might be a good question for Phil to mm -hmm. evaluate the main state law and come back to us with. Yes, our police department can enforce the situation or no, our police department can't, just to have a definitive answer. Mm -hmm. And who's right. Bill? Bill is our lawyer, I'm sorry. He's, our, he's our town attorney. Okay. Can we go through the chief of police first? Because we're running up a wicked bill every time we call Bill. I have some things for later. Yeah. Every time we call him, it costs us money. Absolutely. And that could have changed, but when we had this discussion, uh, about a fireworks ordinance. That's how it was written. So perhaps if there's still, uh, if it, if yeah, if the chief is on the other side. Yeah, then I think it would be worth it for us to get that clarity. So with houses 15 feet apart where I live in the neighborhood that I'm at, there's just no way that people shooting off fireworks that it's not going to land in other people's property. So right. they, the police would actually have to come see, I'd put a spotlight in my backyard. 
so that they could see that it's coming down in my yard. It's, you can see the embers flying over my house and they would then tell them that they'd have to contain it on their property. Is that what you're saying the law is that they would have to contain the debris from going into anyone else's property? Correct. If they launch fireworks, everything they launch has to land on their own property. That's why when we looked into an ordinance, it was sketchy on where we wanted to do it because if you read the state law, someplace like Old Mill, technically you shouldn't be able to light off fireworks because you can't contain it unless there's sparklers or stuff on the ground. It's one of the reasons we didn't go into an ordinance because the state of Maine law already covered if it went into a neighbor's adjacent property. Just trying to find it now, but that's why that's why we did it. It was one of the reasons why we, we didn't pass the ordinance because some of it was already done by the state. Okay, well, I'm in a situation close to that because this is the develop, development on Bittersweet yeah. where Lynn's uh, put up the houses and, and we're all very close, like we're in each other's backyards. There's no way that anyone in that development could set off fireworks. I asked if there's like these big dips of water runoff pools that are huge that go between Goodwin and the upper level, which they could maybe shoot off but it could still very much land in other people's yards in the development. I'm not in the development. I abut the development and it's coming from the development. But if you know that area at all, all those houses are like 15 feet apart. Mm -hmm. There's just no way that anyone, unless they were in the middle of that field and people gave them permission to go ahead and let them spew it on their property, which I also asked if there was a home ownership. There's, there's, there's a homeowners association and Chief LaJoy had no idea who would, I would be able to talk to about getting them to move it over into an area that's a little more sparse and less populated given that there's these big pools, there's open land and he couldn't direct me in that area either so he just said you have to talk to them about an ordinance we don't have one they're allowed to set them off on their property so i was encouraged to come up and talk to you about it and i'm just telling you that that is the situation where i live in the neighborhood i'm in because the houses are very very close to one another so at some point you're saying just get a spotlight and when it happens again, call the police and they should have been updated on state law. And if there's still some sort of inconsistency that the lawyer would, would be able to clarify what it truly meant. Yes. We'll do a little more clarification. And if you want to give me your phone number, I'll call you. Okay. That would be great. Yeah, I just looked it up online, and there's a helpful hint from the State Fire Marshal's Office. It's entitled General Guide to Consumer Fireworks Use, and it's for communities that doesn't have any ordinances. Then uh, Maine Public Law Chapter 416 provides the uh, guidance. And under Section 223A, subsection 8B, a person may use consumer fireworks only on that person's property or on the property of a person who is consented to the use of consumer fireworks on that property. The person who violates the subsection commits a civil violation for which the fine of not less than $50 or more than $500 plus court costs may be adjudged for any one offense. So I think that's what John was referring to. Does it specifically, what, what is this, does it say specifically about debris? No, it, it, it says that they may use consumer fireworks only on that person's property or on the property of a person who is consented to use, to the use of consumer fireworks on that property. <laughs> so, 
So he's on his own property. That's not the issue. Mm -hmm. They're just shooting it onto my property. It's my plan then. Yeah. Right. I, I'm just going to say again, I feel like a, a good step for us because I think after hearing that, I would be surprised if the chief is going to change his stance on this. I think it would be worth it for us to review, to ask Phil to review that particular section and see if there is any standing for the police department to intervene. And, and we can just find out a yes or no question from mm -hmm. that and then take it from there. Because it's basically littering, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's their stuff that's not even just the nine. These are potent chemicals mm -hmm. that I don't really want in my yard, but continue to increase year after year, which means I'm scattered. Stuff scattered everywhere I'm trying to pick up and then mowing over it. And there's so many tiny pieces you can't get it all. And it's just distressing. So all right. So okay, so the, the town town manager will contact the chief of police. We'll, we'll take that route and uh, then uh, if we don't resolve that, we'll, we'll contact the town attorney and get, get an opinion. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Any other public comment? I see Barbara Hopkins with a hand up. I want to thank you for uh, addressing the licensing of medical marijuana caregivers. I encourage you to act quickly as we know of a registered medical marijuana caregiver who has said to several people in our neighborhood that they intend to open a retail store in the barn, similar to what we see at 161 Agunkert Road. And we are very, very concerned about this taking place. And we encourage you to act very quickly on this. Thank you. Anyone else? If I could follow up on that, Barbara, which street are we talking about? I've heard this before, but it, where 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 are we talking about this potentially popping up? You can uh, ask Jen Janelle about it or Mallory. I spoke with both of them. Um, I'm hesitant to say it publicly only because I feel they might expedite the opening of it. So I'm very nervous about the whole thing. I'm upset about the whole thing. Um, the owner is upset and having issues with it as well. Um, we've known about it for some time. I raised it in a couple of letters that I've sent to you. And uh, I, I'm just concerned. If you don't act quickly, if, if there's one here, there could be others. I don't know. But we know this one for sure is saying that their intention is, and they've said it to the homeowner, the neighbor, and others. So that is a big concern. Uh, it's, you know, where is the line? Where is the line between a small caregiver, you know, selling to just patients and advertising publicly, open all kinds of hours, that kind of thing. That's the concern. We need to get those performance standards in place. And what else? Okay, we'll um, move on to uh, Tom Manager's report. Um, I wanted to give an update on the highway building that walls are all up. The trusses were delivered yesterday and the truss is up today. And our crew is helping with that and our, is also going to help with the metal roof when it comes time to get that up. All the striping in the roads and all the parking lots are done now in town. So that was great. Um, we did sweep the roads last week in preparation um, for the anticipation of the tropical storm to make sure that the storm water drains were all clear of any debris. Um, they are now doing roadside mowing and working on stormwater basins, um, repairing those. And the basketball court, the fences were installed last week. Um, the last net actually got delivered today. So once they put the last net up, we'll be able to put the basketball actual hoops up. And um, hopefully that should be done by this weekend. If all goes well, and I really hope that the kids and everyone in town enjoys the space we've provided for them. We're also working on getting floodlights at that area. So especially when it becomes the ice skating rink that will keep it lit so that they can go in through the evening. 
um, working with CMP and affinity lighting um, on that. Um, I also just wanted to mention that Joe um, Roussel is working with the lady who wants the tiny house um, in town who put in um, some requests on that. She has a third party inspector doing a report on the tiny home to ensure that it is um, going to meet all of the safety standards for our area. And actually, that was all I had. I already really went over the spreadsheet on the report. So that's all I have for today. Okay, thank you. Okay, unfinished business. Uh, schedule a workshop on uh, September 7th on medical marijuana caregiver retail storefronts. Uh, we, we felt as though we needed uh, to be able to sit down in the workshop format so that we can have a discussion and, uh, and, and bank some ideas back and forth. And uh, so that will lead in um, well to the planning board schedule on this as well. So, uh, motion would be order, in order to schedule the workshop. Jeff, just about the board, I'm, I'm having trouble finding the, the timeline that you've sent over. When is the planning board's? Um, there's anybody remember the planning board? Sure. Uh, planning board. It's the Wednesday the 4th. Okay. Yeah, the planning board is that uh, a public hearing on. Uh, medical marijuana caregiver stores. That's their public hearing. Okay. That's their public hearing. Um, the idea of dovetailing, you know, following on the next week on the seventh would be that we might learn some some meaningful information mm -hmm. that might help guide us mm -hmm. as a result of that public hearing, and uh, and then uh, the hope is to have. Uh, you know, following that, that's a regular meeting. But if they also have uh, some some ideas to you know, forward to us mm -hmm. with respect to that, I don't think it should be too much. Mm -hmm. um, but it, uh, it's not, I don't think it's lengthy in terms of, of what we need to do with the ordinance, at least in my view. Uh, if I could just add one thing, um, I don't think we need to have a full on discussion for it now, but. I do think um, just given like the public feedback we've heard th throughout on all things marijuana, I think it would probably be prudent to insert a section on licensing, much like we did with medical cultivation. Um, I think we could probably use much of the same language, so I can be sure to have that prepared for our workshop on the 7th. Um, and I, if I could guess, I would guess that we'll get that feedback on the planning board public hearing as well. Um, why don't you... Uh... I'd like to make a motion to schedule a workshop, uh, a town council workshop on September 7th at 6.30 p.m. to discuss medical marijuana caregiver storefronts, retail storefronts, um, with the intention to include a section on licensing. Second. second. Who was first on that second? I was. I'm live. <laughs> <laughs> Unfair advantage. It's an audio delay. I'm sorry. I don't know. Okay. Um, okay. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, uh, we'll take the roll on that. Mallory? Yes. John? Yes. Abby? Yes. Jack votes yes on that too. Okay. Um, and then the second item under unfinished business to schedule public hearing on September 14th. Medical marijuana caregiver retail storefronts. Chair, I move we schedule a public hearing on 914 for medical care, mer yeah, medical marijuana caregiver retail storefronts. Second. Okay, second by Mallory. Any discussion on that? You have to take the roll. Mallory? Yes. John? Yes. Abby? Yes. Jack Coaches. Both those motions passed 4 0. And the third item on unfinished business is a general topic of uh, medical marijuana caregiver licensing. Mallory, you requested that. So, uh, what do you want to say? Um, I 
thank you for adding to this to, to the agenda. This is just something that um, I would like to see us um, continue to keep and unfin under unfinished business until um, we've resolved work on this. I think we've heard from the public quite a bit, um, and I, I talked about it at length in our meeting last week about the need to establish not just licensing, but potentially regulation for caregivers. Um, you know, Barbara Hopkins' point um, about um, basically registered caregivers potentially being able to grow and combine um, multiple caregivers together. This is just something that I do feel like it's important that we address. Um, I don't necessarily have anything specific prepared here. I just wanted to bring it up um, for the group for us to discuss and hopefully keep it as unfinished business, perhaps <laughs> suggesting a workshop. Um, I do think that this is something that we need to um, take action on. And uh, depending on the route that we go, my understanding is that we were to just proceed to sit strictly with licensing. I think that's something the council can tackle. Um, but I do feel like there is a need to um, perhaps craft a charge for the planning board to address the um, uh, co-op kind of potential that there is where if there's multiple caregivers living in one primary residence, they could potentially combine their 500 square foot and end up with a large scale growth facility. And the ordinance that we just passed last week was our intent there was to prevent large scale growing in residential areas. And I don't think we fully closed that gap. I have a question in that, because uh, words do matter, mm -hmm. and been poking around the law a little bit, and if this says caregiver, caregiver licensing. Mm -hmm. Now, in the law, there is a distinction between caregiver and registered caregiver. Mm -hmm. Is the intent to uh, include within this licensing proposal caregivers? Registered. To registered caregivers. I will be perfectly honest. I'm not going to say anything that I, I don't want to speak off. I'm, I'm not solely confident. That I totally understand the difference between registered and unregistered caregivers. My intent with putting this on the agenda and the words might not be exactly the words that were needed. I would like for us to discuss licensing for caregivers and registered caregivers. If you think about it, we have to license our dogs every year and the town keeps track of how many dogs there are in town. I don't think it's unreasonable for us to do the same thing for registered caregivers, not in any way, shape or form, trying to create a burden on them. Kind of extra process or a significant key, um, simply just a process in which we have an awareness of where these are happening in town, gives us a little bit of a leg to stand on as far as enforcement goes. That is licensing. I think there's a separate topic that we need to address around the concept of the co-op thing where um, caregivers by registered caregivers, caregivers by main, like according to main state law, have the right to grow 500 square feet of canopy on their own personal property. To use the example again of my husband, my daughter and I, once my daughter becomes an adult, the three of us technically could be registered caregivers and build a 1500 square foot building on our property, which is not too far off from the ordinance we just passed last week. And that's approaching what I would consider to be large scale cultivation as we defined it last week. And our intention with that ordinance was to prevent that in residential areas. And I don't feel like we have done that. So perhaps to clarify, I think there's actually two topics here. There's licensing and then registered caregiver growth ordinance, something along those lines. Mallory, if, if I could um, add to that, I. Thank you for adding this to the agenda. Um, I completely agree. In meeting after meeting, and I hear concerns um, that are just continuing. I'm thinking more solution-based now and clarity. Um, there's so many pieces to this. At the same time, it gets a little convoluted. Um, but there are clear issues and problems that have been identified. Um, just in the issue of you know, full transparency, I spoke with a code enforcement officer today in Jen. Um, asking about, in particular, one of the issues we've heard a lot about was, and this could be solved by um, licensing and performance standards, would be issues of the issues with hours of operation. 
Um, that's one of the most common things I've heard uh, in reference to a gunquet. Um, so I think we can limit the hours of operation. And I, I think that's about as far as it got with a code enforcement officer that we, we can set performance standards for operating businesses. We can limit hours of operation. Um, and I asked, well, how, well, where, well, what do we, what do we do? And so that it's going to bump to fill. Um, so Mallory, I appreciate you wanting to get a head start, and I would be, I'm really um, interested in helping you do that and helping prep for that next workshop. Um, because if we put something together that would solve some of these issues that we're seeing and solve some of the concerns for future developments, um, and we clear that with Phil, our attorney beforehand, we could have a really effective meeting. Oh, quick, quick search to answer your question, Jack. To be a caregiver in Maine, you have to register. So there isn't a caregiver and a registered caregiver. In order to be a caregiver in the state of Maine and service patients, from what I just looked up with quick search, you have to register with the Department of Health. So you have to register in order to be able to do it. So we're only really dealing with people that are registered according to the law. Again, well, quick, quick search, I not, mean, I just not anything definitive. But I, I agree with Mallory on the other side because it does, it does enter into that realm of myself, my wife, and my daughter who are all over age. We do the same thing at our house if we want to right now legally so i think we need to definitely address that whether we address it of we cap it at 500 square feet for a residential caregiver right one or no you, you can't outlaw completely because the need is there the, the need is there but you can make sure it's small enough so it doesn't create the hassles we have in the one that's creating all the turmoil yeah and and to be clear i mean i think from state's perspective, registered caregivers are, are allowed to grow up to 500 square feet. I don't think we, we can touch that. Um, but I think we can do things to make sure it stays at that point. And, you know, I, I think the intention here is not to kind of impose on any of these caregivers, but rather just make sure we have uh, performance standards and an ordinance in place to keep it to, you know, to continue with our goal with, um, medical um medical marijuana cultivation growing facility the ordinance we have last week we intentionally just tagged that for um the industrial zone because we didn't want it in residential and so that is my sole intention here is to just make sure that something similar can happen um where multiple care caregivers could combine together So what do you all think is a, a good um, next step? My understanding is that anything related to licensing the council, we can pull together that language and like that is our responsibility. But it, as we're talking about the um, registered caregiver co cooperative concept of multiple people being able to combine together in a residential zone, that to me feels more like a zoning ordinance, which to me would mean that we would need to engage the planning board on that topic and perhaps craft, craft a charge for them. Um, well, uh, my, my, my simple question before mm -hmm. was, to, and, 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 that, and now I, it, it's becoming more clear that I'm, and I'm very hopeful that we're gonna have something on the table that we can discuss on the 14th. Oh, so. So the seventh is focused just on storefronts. No, you, you added licensing. Licensing for storefronts. Oh. So sorry, that was unclear. Oh, 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 so oh. see, that's like again the words do matter. So I, I just jumped down to something that you wanted to recur and recur and recur, which was medical marijuana caregiver licensing. So that's not what you intend on the seventh. So let me clarify if. I, I think I've been operating under the assumption that we are like, there's this topic that we are talking about and we only are talking about this topic. And so that would mean to me that on September 7th, we're only focused on caregiver retail storefronts. If we have the latitude to also discuss licensing on the 7th, let's do it. 
Um, I, I just did didn't. That. We yeah. No, I, I know, but like, so when I brought up license and we were talking about that, I was talking about it through the lens of exactly what we did for uh, cultivation, where we inserted into our cultivation ordinance, a section on licensing specific for cultivation. That's what I was referring to here when I, when I was talking about storefronts of we should do the same thing for a store. That is not, when I brought that up, I was not talking about licensing specifically for all caregivers. This was just for operating a storefront because we're talking about a storefront ordinance. I'm fine with that. I just want to know what we're going to be talking about and so we can be prepared for it. Yeah. So, so that there's going to be certain, hopefully, paper on the table that we mm -hmm. can discuss will be in the same mm -hmm. one foot here but right now not knowing what we're talking about with each other so i just want to make sure we're clear on what we're doing which is basically looking at the draft of the of the amended draft of the medical marijuana retail store or um, and, and then licensing for that type of business. Adding licensing to that ordinance. Yeah. I completely support that. And I agree with you, Jack, that it's going to be a more productive uh, and efficient meeting if we have something before us to actually work with. So um, Mallory and I have said that we will both work on that and have that for us to consider. I think for the storefront topic, unfinished business number one, we have an, an existing amended ordinance for fronts only. I think we've started ourselves down a path where we're addressing licensing for each individual type of business. I don't think we can stick a licensing section that's that's global for all caregivers into an ordinance intended just for medical caregiver retail storefronts. My intent for the seventh, to be perfectly honest, was to basically take the rather large chunk from the ordinance we just passed last week on cultivation repurpose that language, swap out what we need to so that is now applicable for storefronts, perhaps we change the fee. And we that was going to be what I would bring to our meeting on the 7th. Again, the 7th is just focused on re medical retail storefronts. Yes, and following Jack's suggestion that we have that switch out language right there before us so we have something tangible to discuss. And so it seems like we're all in agreement on that. That's a good idea. So are we all clear that number one on the agenda is different than three? Yes, completely. Because three is not about stores. It's about caregivers in their you, home. You, yeah, we didn't limit that before. Okay. Yep. I didn't understand we limited that. I thought you wanted to glom on with the overall licensing topic. So, so we're not going to do that then. Well, I guess. To me, I feel like this licensing thing is something that I would like to see us get done sooner rather than later. If, if we are able to insert a licensing for caregivers inside of an ordinance focused on storefronts, I would love to do that, but I don't feel like that makes sense. No, it's not clean. And yeah. It, we have one ordinance for marijuana caregiver retail stores. Yes. We're going to talk about that on September 7th. Yes. Along with that amended ordinance, we're going to insert like license into that. that for medical marijuana retail storefronts. Yes. In, in addition to what we already require for licenses. The licensing stuff from last week is- No, 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 no. You mean it's already in the ordinance? Yes. Licensing permanent fees will be established and reviewed annually by the town council. Yeah, but I think, I think so. So we're going to be adding performance standards that require some additional licensing. So Jack, if you remember when we when I first brought this up about cultivation, I was really I'm trying to emphasize the well, point. Let's stick with stores. No, no, I know. Just I know. Go in ahead. that ordinance, there there was a phrase or a statement in there, something that was referring to licensing, and I kept hitting on a point that we were referring to licensing that hadn't been established. We hadn't put rules around it yet, and I feel the same is true here. And so, all I would like to do for the storefront conversation is do something much like what we did for cultivation, where if you remember, there was a lot of paragraphs, of quite a large section. There was a lot of stuff there. I would like to take that and insert it into our storefront ordinance so that we have the same licensing protocols, same licensing procedures for storefronts as we just passed for cultivation. 
similar, similar licensing standards. Yes. All right, we will discuss it. Okay. Okay, so that's the storefront topic. I think we're all clear for what to expect on the seventh. Right, so just as a as a note, mm -hmm. it is suggested place within the context of uh 140-67.1 that mm -hmm. I think we should be prepared to do that so we can keep it understood where we want to discuss it and where we potentially would insert it. Absolutely. So again, my intention is before the seventh, two weeks from today, to have taken what we currently have for a draft and insert that language that I just discussed. So we have it in front of us on the seventh to review. Yep. We go to the 14th. 14th, we'll have a public hearing covering yep. everything that we inserted into that ordinance. Yes. Plus whatever the planning board, right? Plus whatever exactly. the planning board has, right? Exactly. So that you covers have us. have in front of you what the planning board is recommending. Yes. Yes. So that covers us to the 14th. Three is going to be us starting all over again with something completely different. So three is going to be an ongoing topic. Yeah, agreed. Nothing we're going to solve tonight. It's just something we have to look at is registered medical marijuana care campus home. Oh, what we need to look at next. Yeah. So again, I think for that though, there's really two kind of work streams that we need to establish. There is the licensing process to license caregivers. Then there is a separate process that is more performance standards um, around the amount of square footage that can be utilized for canopy on a primary residence, et cetera, um, to prevent the ability of my husband, my daughter, and I to combine forces and on my property and build a 1,500 square foot or more building um, intended to grow. Or anybody living in that house, right? Doesn't need necessarily have to be family the way it's written. Exactly. We could all rent a house together. Exactly. And that's why I think, I think we need to... My personal opinion, I feel like we need to craft a charge for the planning board. But honestly, I feel like we, we sort of already did. I, I had sent a note to the chair in the fall, or in the fall, in the spring about this particular, I think it's like two, I can't remember the number, but it's the, um, the section of the law that Greg was re referencing last week about the ability to combine um, and kind of create a co-op. Um, and because I think that doesn't fall under the scope of the, the growth like what we discussed last week. Um, I do feel like we need a separate ordinance to address that particular piece, which in my opinion is a charge for the planning board to start. You're talking about the performance standards for, um, for medical caregivers, and where we need to start. So again, there's two topics. There's licensing, which is town council. We deal with that. I got performance standards. Yeah. And standards piece. And, and and please, anybody jump in and correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just I'm just going based on my experience on the council so far. Anything related to port performance standards, zoning, things like that is the task of the planning board to begin for us to ultimately approve and pass. That's one rule. Okay. Because People can do that on citizen initiative. We just have mm -hmm. two referendums on that. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a route, or we can do it on our own. Okay. Uh, but not, not to say that we would do that, but that's the there are three routes. Okay. And the charge could be specifically um, to the planning board to mainly list the issues that we already have seen coming up. And that would be operating business hours and see what their suggestions are for the performance standards for that particular issue which could solve a lot of things. Um, the size of the operation, the number of caregivers, the canopy, uh, all of that, I'd be really interested in hearing their, their suggestions because these are all identified issues that we have. Mm -hmm. So can I suggest for that topic, perhaps uh, 
maybe Abby and I, you, could, you and I could work together to draft a charge for the planning board to address um, operating hours, um, like square footage, um, like a cap on square footage, for, for example, for registered caregivers um, and within their primary residence. Um, it just is a, a couple of things that we kind of want to make sure that we address, um, at least to start. Yes. Any one. Okay. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's, it's an open, mm -hmm. open issue right now. Uh, my understanding, we're working on the model of uh, Wyndham Turner mm -hmm. and uh, for the third one. Yeah. So, uh, but that's everything's everything's wide open. It, uh, and uh, we'll review it and decide which way we're going to go. Just so we're not talking apples and oranges, uh, we, Barbara points out, we do have a draft mm -hmm. from the planning board. Yep. As far as supporting dogs tonight. Mm -hmm. It's different than what's currently on the books. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so. It, but we don't mm -hmm. have a section in here with Kale um, related to the, so we're, we're switching back to the storefront topic for everyone who knows, everyone on the phone. For the topic of storefronts, we do not have a section in here that provides the detail on licensing like we just passed in the cultivation ordinance last week. So I'm just, I, I don't know how many times I need to say this. I'm going to include, Abby and I are going to work together to include some additional licensing language in this draft here. That is storefronts. Can we put that in conversation? Can we put that topic aside? I just want to know what you're trying to do. That's all. And, and so I, I think I have an understanding of that right now. But you know, but there is there's a draft that's uh, that the planning board is going to review at the public hearing. Yes. If that's different, substantially different mm -hmm. than what we're going to propose, then it, it might upset our schedule a little bit if we choose to give it back to the planning board. Yeah. The ordinance here is storefronts only. But you I'm want to add licensing to it. I'm going to add, I, I want to suggest add licensing to the it. License, but that doesn't, that's not included in the, in the draft from July 13th. I know. That's why I, so that's why we said five board? times already that Abby and I are going to pull together the licensing language to have it be included in the draft that we review on September 7th. Yeah. What else? The planning board is something separate, Jack. We've we've no identified from constituents and from ourselves a few uh, generalized issue and problem areas that we want to address through um, looking at our performance standards for this operating business. And that is what we're suggesting, Mallory and I, drafting a charge to the planning board. And again, it's open ended. They could say, you know, have all these ideas, but we were suggesting putting them in the direction of specifically hours of operation, canopy size, things like that, that would be in their charge. The so the planning board that we're discussing now is focused on registered caregivers growing in their own home. It has nothing to do with storefronts. We're already on a path with storefronts. I think we're all in agreement on that. Yes. Maybe I'm not, but I just thought I heard you say that you want to put in some language into the storefront ordinance that deals with licensing. Licensing for storefronts right. only. Well, no, no, but I just said it. So you want to put something in there. Yes. That language doesn't exist in the draft. The planning board is going to be having a public hearing on the first. I know. So they need it before the first is what Jack's telling you. If they're or going to have a public or perhaps you go to work and present it. If, yeah, if they're going to have a public hearing on the ordinance, what Jack's saying is that the whole ordinance has to be there, including the licensing piece. Okay. So if they don't have the licensing piece, they shouldn't be holding a public hearing. Okay. Well, then they can't give us a recommendation on it. Okay. The licensing language that I want to include is copy-paste from what we put in the cultivation ordinance. I can have that to you, to everybody this evening to get this out there for the planning board for next week. That's it. Okay. That's all. Okay. I just feel like like I, we put the storefront. I thought no, we could move on from storefront. No more explanation required. Okay. But I just want to make sure we're clear on which way we're proceeding. Is everyone clear on? Which I way feel you're... very clear. I feel like this is a good plan. Well, it is, but that wasn't spelled out until right now. I understand where Jack was going. We would have left this right now with the planning board having a public hearing. 
without that licensing language being included if we hadn't gone back around this. But I had heard Mallory say in the way beginning that she was going to cut and paste and amend and make it similar to the cultivation licensing requirements that we already drafted. Um, I heard that. Maybe you guys oh. I didn't. And this is all you know. I will license sent to Jen tomorrow for the planning board meeting on the first. Good. Yes. Okay. Lovely. And that way they can get feedback on it and give us feedback on it and see what constituents have to say as well. So. Good. The carousel is going round and round time. Okay. So if we can go back to unfinished business number three, which really should, in my mistake, should actually be two items. Abby and I were talking about drafting a charge for the planning board to address performance standards, registered caregiver growth on, in their own in their primary residence, whatever we want to call it, addressing that particular issue, specifically focused around operating hours and putting a cap on the square footage that is allowed. You'll bring that to the meeting on 914. Yes. Okay. Or Abby and I can work together and draft the charge for that. Certainly we can send it to everybody via email and we can of come to an agreement at our meeting on the 14th before we send it to the planning board. Agreed. Um, I guess if, if that's the approach that we're going to take and it's going to be so focused on primary caregivers, I would think that within that ordinance, this essentially new ordinance we're proposing, we could include licensing in there as well, just like we have for other. Licensing for caregivers only. That would make sense to go in there. Because it seems like we're taking the approach of kind of an ordinance per business type. The ordinance of term, primary caregiver. Yeah, take the like, primary. I'm yeah, I, I don't know why I said primary. I don't know where that came from. But so. Okay. Uh, just, and uh, so. The planning board has made their position clear that they really feel as though that anything to do with uh, non land use topics mm -hmm. with respect to any of these regulations belongs here. Mm -hmm. And so uh, just be prepared, they, they'll kick back if, if uh, uh, something that's uh, not, not within what they feel is their jurisdiction. We will carefully craft the charge so that it falls in their jurisdiction. We'll get, we'll give it our best attempt. I've got it, but you know, in terms of you know fees or any of those sorts of oh, things yeah. like that, that's all us, yeah. and uh, they're not going to get into that. I yeah, I was just more speaking to kind of like where do we put that in terms of like all of the ordinances that we have, and um, it, I mean, it seems like what we're more or less going to be proposing to the, the planning board is to craft an ordinance around registered caregiver um registered caregiver growth i guess and so because that's going to be an ordinance addressing registered registered caregivers i feel like that makes it makes sense to be a place in which where we would insert that licensing language i agree it's our responsibility to put together um but it could all be lumped together in what ordinance much like it was for cultivation and much like we're proposing for storage well it looks like it's the way we're marching along here in, in uh um, what is it, 67? It's, uh, yeah, 140-67 is the adult entertainment. 140-67.1 is the performance standards for caregiver retail stores. 140-67 uh -huh. is the cultivation yep. growing facilities yep. ordinance. So I think we'll just continue marching down that path of going to 140-67.3. Yep. So it's again, it's going to be one one spot in the ordinance that I think makes sense. Yeah. Organization that makes sense to you, Barbara. Because you don't have to define all the zones. Because 
even though they're already allowed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm, I'm just saying that those performance standards, the <laughs> table A and definitions is a you know, 140 9 definitions and table A mm -hmm. attachment one. Uh, that's that's another part and parcel of the whole thing. Yeah. Okay, so we will have a draft charge planning board for our meeting on the 14th. Good. Okay. good. Okay. Thank you for humoring that. Well, no, it's good to get it out because it really needs some discussion. Uh, okay, moving on to new business. Uh, COVID policy. I drafted a COVID-19 workplace policy. It was something that's been in the talks for quite some time and it just never came to fruition. So I did this a little bit on the generic side because it's ever so changing so that we are always following main CDC guidelines. But the big thing that everyone always had the biggest question as the supervisor was, what if they can't be here for 10 days or you know, how are they gonna get paid and whatnot? So in looking through a lot of different things, um, I came up with a, a sick policy specific for COVID that would allow someone to go into the negative into their sick time if it was um, a COVID, related sickness where a doctor said that you can not go to work for seven to 10 days or whatever that time frame might be. Now we would allow them to go into the negative, knowing that if they were to leave employment with a negative balance, that, that would come out of their last term. Wouldn't short-term disability kick in? Uh, there is a seven or 10 day waiting period before that kicks in on a sickness, I believe that would happen. Well, again, before we, Going to negative numbers. If we have another vehicle that's part of our insurance policy that would otherwise cover them, like, like short term disability, it would seem like we would want to utilize that. I'm quite sure there's a seven or 10 day waiting period on a sickness and accident is immediately, but I will verify that. Okay. And then so this interim step might be something we do so that the employee has adequate has income. Mm -hmm. And then a supervisor doesn't have to feel horrible about them not getting paid if they don't have the time. They can't come to work if they're that sick. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of people can't work from home. Some of us can, some you know, a lot of people can't. Yeah. So it just protects them um, during that time frame if, God forbid, if they were to get that. Sick. So you're not covering person of interest or someone in their household having it? Well, no, it no. does. And, and just, so I have a 76 page COVID guide, just, I, just to I'm let sure. you know where we're at, mm -hmm. right? And it changes every week. Right. But person of interest, you have to be, you know, the whole 48, 72 hours, all that BS. You're so not going to any of that. The direct and the indirect exposure, is that what you're touching on? Yeah. So I do have that in here. And I put to follow the main CDC guidelines um, and to call human resources with any questions. We would double check on the main gov. That's where I okay, said so I leave it a little bit on the generic side, so I yeah. don't have to change it every week because I have a lot of important things to do. Perfect. No, nope. you, you covered it. Okay, good. That answer. Thank you. You're welcome. No problem. <laughs> we have people dedicated just to this. One. I'm sure. I'm <laughs> trying to keep it simple, but I'm trying to cover the basics. No, nope, that that covers it as long as it rip, refers back to main CDC mm -hmm. guidelines. That it does. It. Mm -hmm. Sweet. So on this. Um, if there's, if there's uh, no objection, we'll we'll call this the first reading of this particular policy, and we'll vote. Excellent. I believe our vote is required. Yes. Okay. So this is this is essentially be our first reading uh, for documents and supporting dogs. And I will uh, find out that one question that we have and have an answer for you. Cool. Great. Thank you. Okay. I'm moving on to solar farms. We have a recommendation from the memo included in the supporting documents, but um, basically the conclusion was uh, our, the, uh, the last uh, 
It's in the overview. Uh, the board believes further review and necessary regulation to protect the town's citizens and natural resources. Uh, I suppose it believes in the need for further review. So the conclusion says the planning board recommends the town council adopt a moratorium on solar farms until the use can be further researched as and applicable use specific developed standards can be development standards can be established. Shout it out pretty good. The planning board recommends that the town council adopt a moratorium on solar farms until the use can be further researched and applicable use specific development standards can be established. That sounds better to me. It sounds better to everybody else. Uh, so uh, That's the recommendation of the planning board. Does the council have any comments? I, I have one question, Jack. Um, so two are already approved, right? Hexagon and MVD have already been approved by the, the planning board. I thought one was pending. Uh, clean tap solar is pending. The third one. The third one. Oh, okay. So there's three. Right. Um, that they've gone back for more information and modifying their developments. We put this moratorium in place. Does that lock them out, or because they're in the process, they can still go? They have standing. Okay, so I'm good with it then. I'm fine with it. I think this is a wise move from the planning board. Agreed. Okay. Okay. Uh, there you go. Kaching <laughs> 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 goes the hundred dollar bill machine. Hey Phil. Yeah, yeah. Get him on speed dial. Yeah. Um, we'll budget line. Item. I think we'll need to do some research to find out what's appropriate for our town. So, on, um, I, I definitely think that we should um, have a more frame draft and stuff. I just want us to be thinking about um, what kind of establishing somewhat of a timeline for ourselves for the planning board over the next 180 days so we're not down to the last month and you know finally get, getting our ducks in a row um so i would just encourage us at least by the time we implement the moratorium we um perhaps have a little bit of a schedule for ourselves as to i want to respect the physical okay uh because we have a meeting uh, there's a workshop with our consultant on a new town manager on the 31st, I believe. And I'd really like to not block ourselves in uh, near term here, uh, which means the next couple of months, because we know we're going to be quite busy, getting busy with uh, interviews and all the rest mm -hmm. of the things we have to do to tear down the list. So. I agree 100%. We so have so very... I'm, I'm going to respectfully disagree and say, okay, that's to be continued. Well, but so... if, 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 I don't want to interrupt, but I can save this context of going back and forth. If you read the, the final part from the planning board, if we approve this, if we adopt this, it says right here, the planning board would begin reviewing solar farms to specific land use, and if warranted, would make LUDC amendment recommendations to the county council. So we won't have anything to do with this until the planning board is done with it and hands it to us. So we're clear. I understand that you don't want to wait till the end, but no, no, it's no. on the town count. It's on the planning board to give us recommendations. So I'm not in any way suggesting that we start doing any work on this in the next month to two months, but we have uh, passed numerous ordinances, moratoria over the past couple of years. And we've kind of just waited until like sort of the last minute to start doing things. All I'm saying is I feel like at some point, especially at the point in which we pass this moratoria, we should just go through and come up with a list of these are the next steps that we need to take. Not putting in a, a date on them or anything, but just so we have an understanding of the things that need to happen between the point in which we pass the moratorium and the point in which the moratorium is has ended. Because I feel like we've never done that for any of our prior moratoria. We've just kind of passed it, passed like well, 180 days and things will kind of land where they land. Once we get the moratorium, we know that date when it ends and we can work backwards that we know exactly on which date that needs to happen. It doesn't have to fall exactly on there, but that could prevent a little bit of stress and anxiety for us, perhaps later. Be more on top of it.
Any more solar farms? Council member comments, Abby. Um, I just wanted to encourage folks, um, as far as I know, I don't think anyone has, no one's reached out to me. I don't know, Jen, if anyone's reached out to you or the other counselors about like additional planning board members or if anyone wants to step up and volunteer for the um, conservation committee or anything like that. Has there, have we had anyone, any interest or is that something we need to still continue recruiting for? Yes, we, 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 have, we have plenty of openings. Okay. Uh, um, I think the CBA still has two alternate positions open. We can just go down the list. I mean, it's, it's, it's every every local board has, has openings right now. So I just want to encourage everyone. It's a great way to get involved and make a difference in town to do so. And then lastly, I don't think I've commented on this yet, but I just wanted to say um, extra special that, Jen, I think you're doing a great job as interim. And uh, I just wanted to point that out so you know that you're appreciated. And that's it. Betty. John. Nothing constructive, sir. I'm good, thank you. Almost there. Mr. Chair, I move we adjourn. Okay. All in favor, raise your hand. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Good night.